All right, this is episode 20 of Crom Updates, and I am joined once again for the third time with Adam Dodds. How are you doing this morning, sir? I'm doing quite well. Uh, thanks for having me back on, Kurt. Oh, absolutely, especially after seeing um, what you got going on for your pinup, which um, is looking so good. And when I say, uh, you know, in clarifying for people that might be coming into this this whole Crom updates and Crom the Barbarian and stuff, um, you know, I've brought you in uh, based on a finer arts uh, angle. And you do this uh, great stuff called uh, doodly gobbly goop. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can get that on uh, Instagram. And the thing that really struck me when I first saw those pieces um, was just the, the eclecticness of Mark making and it all seeming to work. So how are you feeling about the piece right now? You know, uh, <laughs> you know, in our prior conversations, and as I've noticed in your um, uh, conversations with the other artists, it's like, hey, low stress. You know, this is low stress. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'll be honest. Yeah. You know, as as an artist, just can't help but be right. Um, sure. That there was a moment where it was much not not nearly in the state that it is now where right. there was a week where I was just like letting myself get a little too stressed uh, about it, which, you know, is natural, but uh, yeah, the, it the is. trick, the trick is to like, remember like uh, specifically uh, art in general, but you know, with the doodly gobbledygook, like just the very stream of conscious nature of it is you have to be at ease and it took me like a week of like you know i'll do a little bit here and there and just be like uh, i'm just not you know i'm want i'm wanting it to be a thing rather than right. being like okay right. just just get in the right state of mind and just let your pen move right and so once i got back to that state of mind and being like okay you just gotta you gotta put marks on paper it, once you get back into that state it's like okay now we're flowing and now, yeah, I feel good about the piece. It's just like uh, putting a, I'm going to put a few more bells and whistles. I'm not, I'm going to try and fix a, a couple of like potential anatomy faux pas. But for the most part, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, even if I had to put this in the book as it is now, like I'm, I'm feeling like we're, we're in a good spot. Oh, that, that's good to hear. That's good. To hear. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, when it comes to no stress, the obvious part of me saying, um, you know, I don't want anybody working with me on this project to be stressed. That's just the like corporate side of being stressed. You know, the I've been hired to make said art piece and I want it to be the best. But, you know, for all the years I have had and in, 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 in the experience of being, let's say, a professional commercial artist, um, the stuff that I really don't enjoy um, in my catalog uh, of work were the ones where the client made me stressed. Right. And, and, and that stress is always based on you get this you get this initial idea from them and you know i get fired up and thinking wow man what a what a great thing i I'll, I'll take a shot at that and you do some concept sketches it bounces back to them they're like no no yeah i really like this one but can you do this um but i think the stress always comes in at the final wire because the human brain is trying to finish it right and then the the finish line is with, let's say, me as the publisher. That's kind of what I'm playing here. Mm -hmm. But really what it comes down to, and it's one of the aspects of why um, I'm bringing people in to the uh, Chrome revised edition um, as guest artists doing the pinups, and they'll get virgin covers for, for the publication when it's released, mm -hmm. 
is really for you, the artist, to feel it's complete. In other words, what the what the public's reaction is to it, um, you know, what other artists are re are um, reacting to it. Because I chose uh, six artists. Two of them are, let's say, working um, professionals. Two have a very, um, let's say, commercial connectedness to like uh, fantasy art, let's say, and then two have a finer arts. So it's very much to draw in as much attention from those little points because there's not a lot and has never been a lot of attention towards sword and sorcery, barbarian comics, um, uh, and, and even, and then the black and white being mixed in there. Now there's a little bit of growth out there and, you know, there's some books going on like Adam Lemna's uh, um, Relic Hunter and some other stuff. Right. Um, and the new and the and the new um, Savage Sword of Conan, uh, which I've only seen in reviews. But I'm going to step out on uh, a ledge here and say that you're like n over ninety percent complete. I mean, you're. I can yes. only see and speculate, only seeing like sketch yes. lines not having been filled in. Yes. But for the most part. You're, you are kind of leaving uh, Kram and his sister Lala, um, um, or excuse me, this is Tanit, right? Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking I would make it his sister, but then they both have long hair, so I was like, oh, I'll just make her hair black, and I'll, she'll just be the other lady. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Um, and, and, and then, of course, there's that uh, pulling away the curtain mm -hmm. into that gobbledygook um, um, world. And, you know, I think that's going to be such a neat attractor, Adam, you oh, know, you. I, 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 now I'm, 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 I'm going to admit like now I'm kind of seeing your design in a different way now that it's getting closer to completion, but even more to publication. But have you been real? Have you been really riding that? Like that? This is like your your version of trying to get people to buy the comic book per se. Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, I, when it comes to things like marketing or whatever, right? I, I'm, I, I'm, I used to be vehemently against like like graphic design when I was in <laughs> right. art school. Like it just. Right. Graph design always felt like, oh, you're taking the art out of art, right, and making it a business. Uh, yeah. But, you know, as I've gotten older, it's like, you know, there's reality to the world, right? You, you right. know, you can't right. just make art in a vacuum and expect to survive. <laughs> that, that's very true. Uh, so, you know, in that sense, uh, no, I mean, I just, I think I've always, despite being, you know, saying that I'm anti-graphic design, that like design matters, right? And just like yes. uh, as someone who's done photography for so long, like, you know, especially the kind of photography I do, which, you know, I, I've done, you know, the gamut of all types of photography, but there, you know, when I was at the height of my powers, you know, two years ago, you know, I've kind of taken a break from it. I'm still doing it some, but it's not like my focal point of my art at the moment right. but nonetheless it's like um that photography more or less I, I i would go as far as to stay to say that it's almost a little boring right it's kind of boring right. photography which when right. you're get at that level of making you know images that are like static or quote unquote boring right you got to make the composition really matter, right? And that's kind of what I've certainly tried to, uh, you know, with varying degrees of su success, bring over to my illustration is like really make composition work, right? And so um, I'm always, you know, trying to be mindful of like, all right, you know, I, I'm usually, you know, trying to make something come in from the sides, just make directional devices. And that's just uh, my method, I guess. 
So the um, uh, when we talk commercially, I think it's it is such a spiny, prickly little thing um, where you know brings in um, you know can make people anxious, which is also a good thing. Like um, you know, I think one of the 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 other things that a lot of artists do is and myself very much uh, uh, contributes contributes to this is uh, procrastination. Oh, and, yes. and, 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 you know, once again, um, you know, working from a stream of conscious that happens when you only have 24 hours to get the assignment completed, there's no more time to, uh, pick and bug and, uh, Oh, Oh, should it be this or this? Should it, should be a little more of this or it, all that stuff goes away. And nine times out of 10, my experience has always been, um, wow, wow. I really, really like that. And then. Most of the time, I don't know how many out of 10, but the client has been very much pulled over. But there have been times where the client's been completely like, uh, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't thinking that. Or they want to piggyback on it and say, well, can you change it and make it do this, which they think is easy and digitally? Right. Yes, but I'd, I've never worked uh, that much in um in digital other than graphic design logo design or something like that but when it comes to making a image um art wise it does have a um, um you know amount of time that has to go in and 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 from there but the thing that is just so exciting even more exciting that we're getting closer to um, um completion and then I'll be putting the books, you know, the books together and getting them into your guys' hands as proofs. And then we'll meet again and, and talk and stuff. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I'm going back to this new reaction to this composition and work, realizing this, this, uh, you know, cliche in a sense where it's mm -hmm. like, Hey, everybody out there, come on in. And this is the world I'm in, which is this crazy gobbledygook. <laughs> <you know? laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's this guy at a, a fur lart leotard and she looks like some sort of princess. So why not jump in and find out what's going on with this comic? So I do have to applaud you <laughs> if it just kind of happened that way or not. Well, you know, uh, I've shown a couple pieces, a couple people like on my phone, like a picture of the drawing and, uh, you know, a couple of the reactions were like, oh, that's actually kind of what I want, right? Which is they're looking at her first and like, what the hell is going on here? Like, you know, they're right, confused, right. which kind of um, in a storytelling sense, right? You know, one might argue that like a chaotic image like this is, you know, not successful and maybe, you know, it, it, it would suit some people's taste and some not. But in, in a storytelling sense, uh, in my mind, I've at least arrived at this place of like, you know, these characters are like, um, you know, for lack of a better word, tripping their ass off. <laughs> right. Right. Um, right. And to maybe in some way kind of evoke that sense in the viewer a little bit and, and yeah. not like making the figures so like um making making the image a little too like legible i guess would be the right yeah. term yeah. which i think you know it, it's such a um my my personal take right now and professional take is to really push the image i think as far as it can go um in order to get attention nowadays. But I think one of the things that everybody inherently falls into when they produce something and then they post it on social media, and AI is, act, is actually going to make it even more conducive this way, which I have a kind of a sense of excitement in anticipating this, is that it will be able to read images. And by reading the images, it's going to be able to find uh, uh, compar uh, uh, comparable images 
And if all I do is go on and click things that look like, uh, you know, uh, you know, your work and, you know, uh, David Molina's work, you know, everybody, everybody that I do um, enjoy, I should be getting more and more of that type of information, uh, 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 imagery to view. I think the, the tougher part of it on both sides, in other words, our side and the social media you know, Instagram, let's say specifically, is the is to get attention and maintain attention. But I think the biggest fallibi, fallibility to it is trying to give too much in the way of choices to the individual. Because there's a study, I forget the person's name, I'm going to start remembering it or having it somewhere. There's a study, a guy did a TED Talk years ago. And uh, he figured out or is a part of the study that figured out that if you have more than three things to choose from, you choose not to choose. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so you give up and walk away. Um, so it is one of those things where I'm giving kind of three ish, two and a half, maybe ish style of choice in in a sense. But the reason I want it that way is because I want to see just what magnetically connects with people in the way of, let's say, something being hashtag sword and sorcery, black and white indie, comic book, you know, uh, so, you know, uh, whatever, um, you know, and go from there. But um, are you do you have any questions for me about finishing this up? Like, it, are you in any, cause I really don't want to keep pushing your brain to capacity where you're like, well, did Kurt say he wanted this or that? Cause I'm, I am thoroughly satisfied. And I also agree with you. There's only like a, a little bit of here's and there's that you're going to kind of pull things together. And there might be another um, couple nicks and knacks going on from there. But is right. there anything exactly. that I can answer for you? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, unfortunately, you know, I, as a photographer, I own a scanner, but my scanner's broken. Um, oh, okay. So I'm going to get it scanned uh, either today or tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. There's a lab in town and they'll do it for me. And I've already talked to them uh, and all that. But um, I guess for the sake of printing, uh, I, I know a lot of comic book art is like done to bitmap. So I was just curious what was going to be the most, I was going to send you like all three because uh, a JPEG, a bitmap, and then when I was discussing with the lab, they're like, oh, there's like a three-tone bitmap or, you know, gray-tone nah, bitmap nah. or something like that. Nah, because, um, you know, I'm, uh, uh, we as, uh, uh, well, in printing, in printing from, let's say, uh, uh, self-publishing, you know, I'll put everything together in a 300 DPI, two-size uh, PDF. Mm -hmm. And then upload it. So um, JPEG is always good, but the best file format, Jake and I were just talking about this on uh, last week on Chrom, excuse me, on um, on Turbo Pit, making Turbo Pit Fighter, is uh -huh. um, TIFF, T-I-F-F. -F. Oh, um, really, really, yeah, it's a lot like bitmap. And what it really is um, doing is it's holding larger clusters of information it's like that a lost JPEGs. list picture file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, the 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 once it's compressed to JPEG, there's a lot of Christmas. Um, if you scan directly to JPEG, you actually lose um, some tight, you know, crisp edges. Um, mm -hmm. If there's, you know, obviously in graphic lines and, and stuff to that point. Um, and, and as a matter of fact, when we when I, I was a, a uh, art director for paintball magazine in the late nineties. Um, one of the things that it would always get kicked back to me on to, they would do pre-press that morning before they would stick me on the, you know, stick the book on the, uh, the uh, printer um, press. And uh, there would be like one or two files. I, I accidentally stuck in as JPEGs and they couldn't print them. Um, oh, and so uh -huh. I would either have to find that TIFF or, make a TIFF uh, back from an original scan and stuff. So that always woke me up, you know, uh, to that point. But um, I, if, if you can get a TIFF 
and a JPEG at 400 DPI scale. Because your your image is how how big is that? It's that's 11 by 17, right? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Because at that point, it's also getting shrunk down, so mm-hmm. you won't have any uh, loss, or the loss will be hard for anybody else to notice, other than maybe you know from there. Right, right. Uh, I think the only other thing I was thinking, as far as like you know, uh, at least per our last discussion, right, you know, in your first version of the book, you know, there, there's some slight cropping uh, that happens, right? Uh, uh, on the edges, yeah, out on the edges. Yeah. That's just I mean, the, for the bleed. This is like a, you know, a, if it can be um, addressed on when you send it, Mm-hmm. If there's any cropping, it, it it should happen at the top. Like the, this curve right here, it just I just want that curve to. Well, uh, I am retain. I am going to be yeah I am going to be bringing this to the edge, and because, well, all right, let me uh, let me back up one more. Um, I'm I have made the decision to print this um, revised edition as um, eight and a half by eleven. So magazine style size. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. What's going to happen is that based on, cause I do have a lot of different sizes coming to me. Um, like uh, drawn sword. Um, he, yeah, I think he he's said working. 14 by 19 or something like that. Or no, that's what uh, you draw, right? Well, this is 14. Like for instance, this is the cover that I'm working on right now for my version and it's 14 by 17, which gets down to a good tight eight and a half by 11. But for you, you're going to actually have a little bit of like just a space where I'm going to create like a spine for then the back of the book, you know, for the side of the book and then the back. Um, oh, so uh-huh. then there's collected material. So it'll be kind of like a lead over and then you'll get um, a really good full image in your um, on your cover your virgin cover version. And then even inside um, there's going to be that same thing because uh, one of the things that I have, all there's like a couple things that always kind of get me is the gutter when it's too close, like it's hard to read. It's not as comfortable. So I'm going to be giving a lot more air in the gutter and then a standard comic book, which this isn't is usually around seven by 10. So the eight and a half by 11 gets you another inch, half an inch on the side. So you're getting a little bit bigger art. Right. Um, and I like that. I like, I like bigger art. Um, so everything's collectively pointing to this as a resolve. It'll be black and white entirely. So this will also go to black and white, this art, because I've, I've okay. wanted to see it. Nice. I've wanted to see it in black and white because there's also a chance I'll do a full color version, which really only means these would be full color. Um, and then you would be able to see like my originals in full color, but obviously they're black and white, but there's so many different uh, color pencils and spray paint. You just get a different feeling for the pages. And it might just be like a, um, like an artist edition type of feeling, right. but I'm not, I'm yeah, not yeah. putting any kind of, not putting any kind of uh, pressure on, on that. Um, because we also have, or I should say, I also have, um, the desire based on the success of the revised edition Chrome collected to move into Chrome anthology. So the format would stay the same. And then, you know, I would be bringing in additional people to do story level stuff, comic book sequentials, maybe right. even illustrated stuff. You know, we've already, we've already had that conversation and we can still have that conversation too. Um, so you're going to be good. You're, you're going to be, you're going to be really good. And especially because you're 11 by 17, 17 down to 11, you know, you're getting a really good tight, you know, uh, for my, for my warm up uh, this morning, you know, I, I saw my other St. Sebastian sketch. And I, so I, I did another one with a, with an update to the, the, to the concept, which is like, you know, that, uh, oh, wow. at least via Wikipedia, uh, you know, 
Saint Sebastian, his uh, protector from the plague, and uh, I was like, "Oh, what if the errors were coming out of him instead of into him?" And he's oh, like, wow. "I am the plague." <laughs> it's great. That is that is great. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, that's one of the things I'm really uh, getting. Um, I'm trying to control my excitement for crime anthology for many reasons. One being, I've got to get the um, the revised edition done and then kind of gauge what this, the uh, uh, um, reaction is um, and then, you know, go from there. But the, that, you know, the fact that both you and um, Jason Schoonover have been playing around with, um, you know, let's say Renaissance biblical um, mythology in, con- in connectiveness to sword and sorcery um I, I just see so many exciting things that can come come from that, and I know you guys do do as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, any other questions? Um, hmm, hmm. I don't. If you can think also, so. if you can also scan the sketch, would that be too much to ask for as well? I think that can uh, be arranged. Yeah. Like you the drawing. This, this? The, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that yeah. Would be, absolutely. That would be yeah. that would be really cool because I I have a very decent idea of the layout of the book, but until all pages are done and I have them in my right, possession. Right, you might need a, a page filled here and there somehow. Yeah, yeah. And like I'm I'm also going artsy, so um you know, or zine art zini. I don't know, artsy, artsy zine, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm not trying to deliver on a, uh, a format other than like uh, Savage Sword of Conan and then like the old sci-fi fantasy zines. Um, but this is way more comic book centric than just like articles or maybe short stories illustrated or something like right, that. Right, right, right. Um, but I really also, the other thing is that each artist, guest artist is going to get a full page for advertising, if you will, or promoting themselves. Um, and there'll be, uh, a, um, QR code added to that page. So that'll be a part of the design. And I'll be sending that out, um, in probably a couple of weeks, um, to help people start putting that together, um, you know, in, in, in that idea, because, you know, the compensation level, you know, I have a lot of uh, ideas about it um, being, you know, helping and, and guiding attention to individuals that have been with me on this project. Um, but, you know, it having that uh, like a historical fact, if you will, you know, years down the road when somebody comes across one of these silly things and they open it up, you know, maybe the only thing that's exciting is the is the Adam Dodds, you know, the pinup. And so then they QR code, they QR code, you know, code scan that. And then, you know, they find that you're you're working on this and that and everything to, to that extent. Yeah, yeah. So, I like that. So, cool. you know, these, these are things that I'm working on. So and I my exciting news is just yesterday. I this is uh, the sacrifice, which is story number four. And it's nine pages, um, and I have completed it to the point where I am. I have just sent this out to um, my cohort in uh, with the uh, Making Turbo Pit Fighter podcast, where I'm making a comic mm-hmm. book with Jake Jacobs, and he gives me um, some guidance in, in art direction, if you will. So he just kind of we help kind of asks me questions like, well, I don't understand what's going here or maybe try this or stuff like that. And everything. Some editorial assistance, if you will. Editorial assistance. Yeah. So I'm uh, really excited because I, other than getting some illustrations together for the Krom uh, and the Warlock of, of Shardor story, um, you know, Which I'm looking awesome, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Cause I am, I am, over that anxiety hump of will I actually get anything done? Now I feel like I have things done. I just need to get them finished. <laughs> if that makes sense. Right. Totally. Totally. <laughs> because, because my thing, and I, I, I say this often everywhere I'm at, this is not the art. This, this is the art. This is the art. Yes. For me. So I'm constantly thinking in this format 
And one of the things that I'm approaching is, you know, I really want to get into what I'm referring to as revise uh, a variant, excuse me, additions of, of stories that have, have already been published. Um, and then, uh, um, you know, giving a, a new attitude to them and then being able to resurface older material. So, and this, like I said, this is um, from 2018 and I did them all in ballpoint and I decided, you know what, I'm going to be the one I'm going to do this to, which is the, this is my variant version of my work. So it becomes a little bit more of a portfolio, but it's still going to have all four of the crime stories in there. And then um, uh, I'm really excited to get in you guys' hands um, the proof copy with your virgin covers, but you'll also get a chance to read. I don't know if it's going to be the whole story of, of, of Crom and the War Like a Shardor or half of it. I have, I have yet to, to lay that out. Um, but I think you guys will also start seeing the, the sort of like uh, expansiveness to be able to come and play in if you choose to. Uh, for crime nice. anthology and stuff. So um, I'm... Yeah, I'm that is excited. one thing I'm curious about is just seeing the work in print. Like, like to your point about uh, that being the art piece is the printed work, right? Yeah. The final yeah. book. Yep. Yep. And, you know, I, I'm curious to see if that, like, informs, like, how I tweak things going forward right you know one thing I, i've been paranoid about my you know uh you know uh what, what's the polite being kind to myself version of saying this my uh you know uh kind of wiggly hatching at times right I'm wiggly? Not, like, I don't the know. most consistent hatcher so like part of me have been has been like a little paranoid is like am i going to get more a patterns out of you know, my, no, my shaky we're not, hand. We're not doing, yeah, we're not doing web press. So, you know, the, the I don't know the terminology um, or you, the technology is, is laser. Um, so, you know, you're, you're, we're getting a, if anything, the, the disappointment, if anybody ends up having um, with the book, will be its lack of uh, focus or tightness. So, but I like that. That's also something uh -huh. everybody's going to have to, because <laughs> I love, I love, the thing I love the most is there's a stress that happens. Oh, here, well, I'll show you right now. You know, you know, here's, here's a perfect example of what in as finished art goes, um, you know, this is really good because it is web press, but you know, the yellowing of the page, uh, time mm -hmm. being, you know, it, there can, there's always these sort of small where ink is not thick in every place. So there's even variation in there. Um, right. So it's pulpy and I love, I love pulpy. It's part of the reading experience. If there could be a really nice uh, musty smell that comes off the, Right. <laughs> uh -huh. It's just a bonus. It's just a bonus. Um, but for the most part, you know, it, it, for me, it lends to the imagination. In other words, it, it's asking me to contribute, you know, as part of the storytelling. Um, yeah. Well, you know, that does kind of like um, point to, you know, a broader theme in both my photography and my illustration work is like, <clears throat> you just mentioned like the reader having to like employ a little bit of imagination, right? Yeah, like yeah. that concept of like, you know, make not, I actually, it kind of speaks to a little bit of the, the comic book adage of uh show don't tell. Yeah. Right. It, oh, and it's even maybe a one step further. It's like, it, you, or oh, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, another recent kind of, adage i heard recently is that um the really great artists imply instead of like out and out show you exactly what's going on right so yes. like your brain has to make the story happen yeah right yeah i i i think it's um we're over the rubicon when it comes to losing that i believe in our um entertainment but but 
you know, I think the larger argument people can have with me is, well, I'm entertained if I just sit in front of Netflix and watch this. Yeah, are you? Are you really? Right, or, right. or are, uh, you know, there's, you know, my favorite television show up to this point is um, the first season of True Detectives because they make you work. And the biggest thing they make you work on, if you don't know anything about the Yellow King and Carcosa or anything about pulp and noir fiction, but you're attracted to the first season of um, True Detectives, your brain is going to go on overdrive because it's going to be like, what the heck is a Carcosa? What is, what is this? What do those symbols mean? What is that? And a good, a person with a good, healthy imagination um, will start coming up with stuff. You might end up being like, I was a little disappointed, a little disappointed because I wanted to see something more Cthulian <laughs> at the end. But the ending, the ending still leaned at that. So I was not left holding, you know, my own little uh, uh, fantasy world going, oh, OK, well, that was ultimately disappointing. So did you happen to have you you happen to see that? Oh, series? yeah. Oh, it was great. And, and in fact, now that I'm remembering, you know, you mentioning the Yellow King and whatnot. I want to say that at the time that I watched that first season, I was in that boat. Right. I think Yellow King was something I wasn't introduced to a little oh, after wow. when yeah. I read like. Alan Alan Moore's um, Neo Nomicon right, and uh, right. Providence, um, yeah. you know, both of those make mention of that. So, yeah, I, yeah, I wasn't even aware of it at the time, and I was thoroughly entertained. Well, I I because of the Gardner Francis Fox Library, which I'm the custodian of, and there's a lot of other than Gardner Francis Fox's work that he did, you know, over his span of life. Um, there's a lot of um, extra pulp and other artists that uh, um, we get into publishing um, or at least presenting. And uh, the, the, Yellow, the Yellow King um, as a book, you know, you can get a copy of that anywhere as a PDF or an EPUB file. I can't even remember the guy's name who wrote it. But man, you want to read something that's just trippy. I mean, not only like the time difference, um, but it's just the way they told the story back then was really on that same level. It was just based on assumption. Like, I'm assuming you understand what I'm talking about when I make this description. Right. Uh huh. So, um, yeah. I, uh, so two things. One, uh, so I recently posted a little sketch i did from a kyle baker jla comic yeah that uh, someone else had posted and um i uh just searched you know like jla i was just curious like what you know did kyle baker do more than just uh, that one issue and it, it looks like maybe he didn't but in my little uh research i saw that gardner fox did some jla yeah, he's actually responsible for it. Oh, it's really? The, yeah. So Gardner Fox, it's a shame. Um, I don't want to get too preachy, but um, and it's really a, a lot of it's his fault. But I don't think he had the the the, the hindsight to or the the, the forward thinking. Um, he left comics in 68, 1968. And uh -huh. and that many left D.C., um, because of union, um, they couldn't unionize, they couldn't get a steady page rate or a living wage or, a, you know, basically what we're all living with right now. Um, oh, right. So, and he could make a lot more money uh, doing, let me reach back here. So he did, he did 156 pulp, uh, you know, paperbacks. Mm -hmm. um, so from like, 1953 to 1982. Um, and that's what um, I did with the library was, you know, basically digitally just uh, transcribed these works. But he was making so much money pumping out 12 of these a year at minimum that, you know, he could take care of his family and, and retire pretty happily. But what had happened was, and this is my opinion, 
Um, and there is also a great book on um, All Star, Forgotten All Stars by Jennifer DeRoss. And I'll put a link down below. Great little biography you can pick up on Amazon. Um, and this is also, too, backed by the family, which, you know, we both had uh, ability to sit and talk with. Um, he, when he was leaving in 68, Stan Lee was really pushing the names of artists and himself. Uh -huh. So what happens is comic books start getting molded to who created them. Before it was just junk. You know, right. it was just yes. throwaway material. Nobody cared that Jack Kirby made the comic. They just wanted the comic and they just wanted to read it and then throw it away. But what happened is I think he does get forgotten and lost. He, you know, I could sit here and run a laundry list of stuff that he contributed to, mainly obviously through the DC universe, because that's where he, he resided, um, the majority of his input. Um, but, you know, the he, he came up with that super team of already established comic book characters. Like, you know, we all know what Marvel did. With, you know right. Jack Kirby and and, and uh, uh, Fantastic Four, but he was bringing Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and the, you know and and they were now a a league of superheroes. But he also came up with like uh, multiverse, which was you know obviously having multiple people play the same character, but it be in different um, counter Earths and stuff and intervals. And, um, he invented the utility belt for Batman. He wrote Batman. Oh yeah, in the I think beginning. you mentioned that to me before. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So he's 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 really, I think, just really lost uh, to all of us, uh, and um, I think it's a real shame. And it was one of the other reasons. I really well, don't I... care for a lot of his uh, his uh, DC work. It's really uh -huh. hard for me to get through because the art itself is not very aligned with it. But I just feel his paperback novels and pulp stuff is just, I mean, especially his Kothar and Kyrick and novels of our travels. Well, um, you know, I, as I kind of mentioned on a Instagram conversation, you know, at some point, you know, he even implies the ancient aliens in uh, Krom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is like yeah. ahead of its time i feel like yeah he he you know the pop the thing about pulp and comic books and paperbacks i don't know till maybe the late 80s or something um you were basically doing your version of that flavor of that month in that year so there was already something that came out you know, with Kothar and Kyrick, it was the boom explosion of 68, 69 of Krom and the Lancer books. And so that ended up causing people to go out, publishers to go out and buy, you know, or ask, you know, request from writers uh, to come up with that. But Fox's passion, and this is from his family, um, they all said the same thing. One of the granddaughters, actually, one of her fondest memories was being taken to um, to see um, Conan the Barbarian <laughs> with with her oh, grandfather, really? so awesome. she was just you know she's not a big fan of comics or, or what have you, but that was just something he just couldn't let go of, you know, in a, in a sense of thing. So it's 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 a lot. It's in a lot of his work that sword and sorcery. Um, so yeah, then the playing of like ancient aliens and and. And uh, yeah, I, I, I just think those those that stuff is way more interesting than the versions that are being made right now. You know, the people oh, sure. taking content like that and trying, you know, as a flavor, let's say, and try to portray it out. And I'm not saying everywhere. I mean, there's 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 stuff out there. But for me, the win win is just having just complete like. It seems like nonsense. But for me, it just rings like, yeah, that could be true. <laughs> well, I mean, just as long as it's like a, a vision, right? You know, yes, in our previous yes. conversation about like yes. folk art, like yes. being like, as long as that is like a very a singular vision, that's better yes. than turning out like, oh, I know the formula that works. I'm just going to do a good version of that formula. Yeah. And Which is, going... you know, there's nothing wrong with that per se, but, you know, I respond no. better to... 
Yeah, I, you know, going all the way back to the beginning of our conversation today, and, and it'll probably, it'll definitely help us close today's update. Um, that's the difference, I think, between successful and not successful. And what I mean is like, even if you're sitting down to make something commercially viable, to make a living and stuff, you have got to make it so personal to how you feel and see it and hope, which is only what any true artist can do. Hope, right. hope it aligns with the outside world when you do it the opposite. In other words, and I've done this, so I'm, I'm completely uh, uh, not immune to it and it still seeps into my you know, the only times I walk away from my my drawing table frustrated is when my brain's going, uh, this could be a little bit more commercially viable if you, and my brain's starting to fire off all, uh, on that. I'm like, nope, I'm getting up, not working the rest of the day. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want that in my work. I want it to be really about how honest I can be um, and making it. And I also have to say, Adam, that was something that came across and I was taking a chance and reaching out and contacting you. And I can't, I can't pat myself on the back anymore <laughs> by no, by, by, by having you a part of this project and so much being there that I knew it was going to be there in alignment. So once again, I do have I, to thank you. So I am, I am grateful uh, for the opportunity. I just uh, completely feel at times like a, a a novice to the game but uh sure. i know that i am uh i'm a creative and so that's that's always my dominating uh driving force is that i can be creative i can i can produce something that's you know unique original of myself and one other thing I, i'll mention to you one yes. one uh thing that kind of helped me get over the hump was uh, Ken Landgraf's uh, YouTube channel. Yes, I, I'm in the same boat. I like, you know, just watching him draw. He's very good. But I, watching him draw, I, I what I responded to and what helped me kind of get over the hump was like seeing him not be precious about it. Correct. He's just Correct. getting after it. He's just getting after it. Oh, yeah. Every time I watch him, he makes me he makes me want to draw. So, um, and get freer, get freer. And that's actually what this is really about is I want that same just impulsive freedom to it. Um, and, yes. then, and then go from there. Um, but one thing I do want to leave you with, because this is not obviously going to be the last time we get together, you will receive a copy of the revised edition with your cover on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I do not know at this point, I, at when that would be. I am really pressing myself to have them out by the end of next month, which is April. Um, so, and that would be even in your hands. But one of the things in timing that I don't, I, I, I can't bet on, in other words, I can't write it into my schedule is because of print on demand, the timing of the item, you know, the book being printed and then shipped can vary from three or three to five days to two weeks. So I've got to basically make sure that I'm getting enough in the way of timing between uh, uh, me completing a proof version to get in front of uh, all, all, all artists participating and mm -hmm. then getting you guys on, on another podcast to be able to, to give your reactions and, and discuss further about it. But even beyond that, um, immediately after you get this completed and scanned and off to me, um, I'm really hoping that this, uh, you know, gets you fired up to create maybe a sequential art type of storytelling mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, linked pieces of whatever it is. And, and, and obviously, uh, with, with the pending success of the Crom um, revised edition and getting into Crom anthology, then there'll be a, a, a space for, for your work to, to be, um, promoted through. Awesome. I, I cool. like the sound of all that. Great, great. Uh, if you don't have anything else, Adam, we can let these people get back to reading comic books, making them if they do. 
Uh, let's do that. Thanks for having me again, Kurt. <laughs> You're welcome, Matt. We'll see you.